Well, good morning, Victory family and friends. So good to be with you on this 10th of January, 2021. I trust that you are strong and ready and excited about 2021. Um, I pray that you have rested. And if, you've, if you did not, uh, that's why I'm here this morning to encourage you and uh, share the Word of God with you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for the wonderful privilege of being together. Thank you for the honor to worship you, bow our knees, prostrate ourselves before a mighty God and a great King. Thank you that you are our source of strength and encouragement and provision and direction and that this morning we come humbly to you and ask you to communicate with us and speak to us and, um, and, and that you will encourage your people. Father, we, we receive your word with gladness. We, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do and what you're going to say to us in this morning. We bless you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to share a word with you this morning and, and listen to this. I'm calling it, Remember the Good Days. Remember the Good Days. I, I want to read to us from Mark chapter 6, verse 45 to 52 and several other scriptures. But let's start with that this morning, Mark chapter 6, verse 45. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. And then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind, wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out. For they, all saw him, for they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased, and they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. For they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. And then I want to read you a scripture out of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. You know, it's that time of the year, New Year, when people cast vision, when we're all supposed to cast vision for ourselves our families, our businesses, and our churches. It's that time of the year where we come back from a time of rest, where we have contemplated, assessed things, uh, looked at things from the past, and see how we would adjust it concerning the future, coming back with renewed strength and vim and vigor, ready to tackle the new year, ready to dream, to work, to build, and to establish. To work out who am I going to be this year? How am I going to fulfill my kingdom purpose? How will I work out my purpose and destiny in this new year to make a difference to society, where I work, where I function? And how will I advance the kingdom of God? But we are 2020. <laughs> Some things that should have ended are still here. Some things that should have started were put on hold and didn't start. Instead of an end of the year, things that were over, and the beginning of a new year, things that could start, many people at this moment in time find themselves in the middle of nowhere with a sense of being in no man's land. Like we're still in the middle of something that should have been past. It's very easy at this time to start doubting, be uncertain, question everything, question God, and wonder whether we will ever see the good old days. And I'm, I'm here this morning to say to you that there are good days ahead of us. You know, when Israel found themselves in bondage with an, in, uh, under another nation in Babylon, it was Jeremiah that prophet, prophesied over them and say, God says, I need to tell you, I know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you to give you a future and a hope and days that are going to be better. And it's very important at this moment in time 
that when we are in the middle of something, that we are in the middle with Jesus. It's in Mark chapter 6, verse 47, that the Bible tells us that Jesus was sending the disciples over to the other side, gave them an assignment, and it was at nightfall, when night came, that something happened. That when they were in the middle of the sea, the Bible says they felt resistance. A storm started uh, coming towards them and raging amongst them, and, and they were struggling. The Bible says they were straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. And it, it was at this time that Jesus showed up, halfway, in the middle. Now, I don't know about you, but in the middle or halfway has got different connotations to different people. Sometimes it's a good thing. You know, when, when you go somewhere and people say, hey, we're already halfway. Other times, it's terrible when people say, we're only halfway. So, so it means different things to diff different people. It's not pleasant when you are busy discussing something and explaining something to someone and they interrupt you right in the middle of your explanation. It's not always nice when you are very really busy with something and somebody in the middle of your, your, your process asks you to do something else. It's not pleasant when we start a brand new year and we are supposed to be excited about new possibilities, new exploits, new business ventures, and about advancing the kingdom of God and then realize we are still in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a drought, maybe in the middle of a divorce, maybe in the middle of a financial disaster, maybe in the middle of some relational tension in and amongst your family and friends, maybe mourning a loved one. Maybe in the middle of, a, of political chaos that we see in and around the world. The question is, what do I do? What, what do we do when we start a year and it, and it didn't feel like we started anything? What, what do we do when we're supposed to leave a year behind, a season behind, an era behind, and it feels like we're still in the middle of something? Well, I, I want to encourage you today. I want to say to you that... There are several things I want to share with you out of this portion of Scripture about Jesus assigning the disciples to go to the other side and them experiencing a lot of resistance, a, a storm right in the middle of the sea. What do we do? Well, the first thing that I want to say to you is that we have to engage in life. You know, life kind of comes to all of us and we involve in life. And, and one of the most important things that we need to remember is that we need to engage in life. We need to participate. Because if, if we don't, it paralyzes us and we then sit disengaged. And, and when we disengage in, in life, life happens to us. And I want to say to you, God never intended for life to just happen to you. God wants us to intentionally, deliberately and willfully engage in life with Him. Second thing that is important that I want you to remember is that um, going to the other side is different from being in control and being able to predict the exact outcome. I think part of what COVID-19 has done to us and helped us to understand is that I don't have to be in control of everything. We shouldn't be in control. And even if we thought we were in control, we were not in control. But that doesn't mean that I need to disengage and that I should not aim getting to the other side, the other side of whatever it is that we're in. Whether it's the pandemic, whether it's the financial challenge that you face, the relational issues that you battle with, the stuff that you're struggling with in your own personal life. As we engage in life and aim for an other side, an outcome, even if I'm not in control of everything and I don't know exactly what the outcome will look like, there's another side. Then I've realized whenever we engage in life and as people engage in life, they either engage with faith or with fear. You know, I've seen people over this last year with a phenomenal strength and a courage, whether they were frontline workers, whether they were people in business, fellow believers, even people uh, in business and other, other scenarios, or arenas of life, uh, how they've engaged with a sense of, of faith, believing that they can come through this, that we can come through this, that, that as we engage and, 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 and might not be in control, but with faith and confidence, 
trust that we can come out on the other side. And then I've seen people who had a lot of things in their favor, people that were positioned well, people that were privileged, people that were, in a sense, safe, but were full of skepticism and negativity and doubt and unbelief and, 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 and were people that were not good to hang around because of the fear and the anxiety, the negativity and the doubt that they approach life with. So, so it's important that we understand we, when we look at this story uh, about life that we need to engage, that we need to have another other side of things and go for it, and that we need to engage in faith. You know, wh when I read the story, th there are several things that were amazing to me wh when I read it. I, I wonder whether you picked it up with me. The Bible says that, that the way that Jesus saw them was different from the way that they saw themselves. Now, you know, l let me just stop there for a moment and just remind you. One of the most important things about vision is what we see. The Bible says without vision, people perish. I, I want to also say this this morning. With the wrong vision, seeing the wrong things, the way you see yourself, the way you see life, the way you see your marriage, the way you see your business, the way you see the economy, the way you see things around you can cause you to go into a place of fear and anxiety, doubt and unbelief and can cause you to utterly perish. Versus if you could see, if you and I could see what God wants us to see, if we could have prophetic insight, if, if we could see life the way God sees it, if we could see from His perspective, the Bible says it causes energy and faith and confidence to rise in us. And, and when we look at the story, we, we realize that's the way that Jesus saw them. He saw them totally different from the way that they saw themselves. The Bible says that he, he saw them straining. Did you hear that? Jesus came walking on the water, and when they are slam bang in the middle of the storm, in that place where it is as far to go back as it is to go forward, where it's uncomfortable and uncertainty settles on you, and you're not sure what to do, Jesus is there. He's right there with them. And the Bible says he saw them straining. Now, before I carry on, I want to just say to you, I think straining is okay. Straining in life is not always bad. Experiencing resistance, having to put muscle and effort into it is not bad because that's what it does. It develops capacity and it develops muscle and it develop, develops character. And I want to say to you sometimes, if you are anything like me, I don't like resistance. I don't like things that that come up against me. I want, I want smooth sailing. I want good weather, great waters, and a nice wind in my sails. But, but I've learned over the years that, that all, not all resistance is bad. If, if, you could, if you could turn your sails in the right direction for that wind, it can work to your benefit. It can develop you. It can give you speed. It can give you momentum. And so I want to encourage you today, don't see every bit of resistance as bad, terrible, and evil. Because I know that God's a good God and He's a good Father. And he's, it's not God's. It was never Jesus' intention for the disciples to perish. It was never His intention for them to be destroyed. He wanted them to learn something. So, so resistance, strain is not always bad. The second thing that is important, that Jesus came walking on the water. And, and the Bible says He was about to go past them. But that's strange to me. <laughs> Isn't it? The Bible says he saw them straining because they were struggling to row. And he didn't do anything about it. He wanted them to know, listen, there's some strength in you. There's more to you than what you realize. There's capacity and ability. I've built you. I've made you in my image and likeness. I've put gifting and talents and skill and ability in there. And if you would trust in me and rely upon me and not on your own strength... Don't let this little bit of strain and resistance stop you from fully being who I've called you to be. Second thing is that the Bible says he came walking on the water. Uh, Jesus was saying, hey, while you're struggling and feeling resistance, look at me. I'm doing the impossible in your storm. I'm walking on, the, I'm walking on your storm. 
I, I, I'm standing and demonstrating the impossible. And I want you to know that this, this morning, where, where you are sitting and struggling, right in the middle of your situation, the God of the impossible is watching over you. He's with you. He, if you would just sit still for a moment and take your eyes off the sea and the circumstance and the storm and the thing that you struggle and look at Him, you'll realize the God of the impossible is in your midst. The third thing that is amazing to me is that statement I just made. And he says, and he would have passed them. He, he, he would have passed them. I thought, God, how, how's that possible? When you look at us and you see us straining, I realize you're not going to just grab us every time the f- or every f- the first time that we, that we call because we need to discover that there's more to us, more of Christ in us, more in who you've made us to be than just rolling over and giving up. I, I realize that, that when I know you and I put my confidence in you as my God, that the God of the impossible is my God, and even though I'm in an pos- impossible situation, all things are possible with God. But, but, but if I'm struggling, why would you think about walking past me? And, and God showed me several things, I think, one of the first things he showed me is in Philippians 4.13 where he says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I think Jesus was looking at them and saying, guys, you, you are skilled and experienced and fishermen. You, you know the sea. You have, you've been in situations like this. Don't worry, you're going to make it. I've sent you to the other side. I'm with you and, and, and you're, you're going to make this. Just kind of put some muscle to it, put some faith, trust me, and work together. You're going to make it. I think the other thing that God's saying to us in a time like this when we get a bit anxious and uncertain, He's saying, when you are weak, you are strong. When you come to a place in life uh, and you slam bang in the middle of things that causes you to be uncertain and feel unsafe, um, if you acknowledge that you need me, I'm going to be there for you. I want you to know that even though there are certain gifts and talents and abilities that I've blessed you with and enabled you with and empowered you with, you are nothing without me and you can't do it without me. So, so don't trust and rely upon your own strength, your own intelligence, your own ability and your own righteousness. And so there's some things that we need to to learn some things that you and I need to understand, something that we need to settle in our heart as we engage in this crazy time, in, in this uncertain time, in this, in this time where, where many people say the good old days are gone. I'm, I'm yet to say, I, I, I intentionally didn't call it being in the middle or God meet you in the middle. I called it better days, good days. There are good days ahead of us. You know, uh, when we look into history and, 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 and events past, everybody that, that God ordained to be born on this earth was born for such a time as this. Can you imagine? You see, Daniel didn't come into the easiest of circumstances when he found himself in the middle of the lion's den. Joseph was not, uh, didn't have smooth sailing when he found himself in the middle of a pit uh, uh, on his way to his destiny. And so I can carry on. Uh, at different times, uh, wh- whether it was uh, uh, a century ago or five centuries or ten centuries ago, you will find people in history that at a time where, where humanity gave up and gave in and thought it was over and done with, somebody stood up to say, you know, I believe that there are still good days ahead of us. I believe that though we're in the middle of a mess, uncertainty, uh, uh, in a situation where things that should have been passed are still with us and some things that should have started has been put on hold and delayed, I believe that right here we can come together and make a difference. What we need to do is we need to engage. We, we, we need to, to get involved. We, we need to make sure that we are living life from a place of fear and that we're going to the other side. There's an other side to what we're seeing and experiencing right now. We need to know that whatever perspective we have and however way we see this, God sees it from a different perspective and He's not walking past you. He's not walking away from you. He's not indifferent. He's not distant. He's right there in the middle with you. And he wants to empower and you. And as they called out to him, he says three things to them. 
God saying something to you and me today, in spite of the uncertainty, in spite of all the other voices and all the other noises that we hear, the first thing Jesus said to them, be of good cheer. <laughs> he says, there's power and praise, guys. Don't get all negative and skeptical and don't let what comes out of your mouth sink you. D don't be so focused on what you don't have and what is wrong that you forget to praise Him and worship Him for what you do have and what He has done for you and the potential of what can be. There's power and praise. And I want to I wanna say that to you this morning. You're going to have to make a choice because as, as you choose to go and engage in life, as I said earlier on, either with a spirit of faith or a spirit of fear, either negativity and doubt and unbelief and judgment and criticism and skepticism is going to come out of your mouth and draw you down with a spiral so fast that, that you won't be able to help yourself. Or you can lift yourself up by praising the God of the impossible that's watching over you, that's got the world under, uh, in His hand and under His control, and He's going to work things out even though I don't understand and I don't always know how. There is power in praise. He says it's a good time to cheer. It's a good time to say thank you for, by faith, what I'm going to do instead of moaning and groaning and allowing the devil to take you to a place of negativity. He says, the second thing that he says after he says to them, come on, be positive, praise God that I'm with you. He says, it's I. In the Old Testament, he said to Moses, I am. He says, it's I, the I am. I'm with you. The one with whom nothing is impossible. The one that, that can do anything. The, the one that's, that, that is never too late, that's always on time. I'm watching over you. That's, that's me. It's God. So, so, so you, you might not have all the right people watching over you, hearing you, listening to you, sensing what you're going through. I know we're going through that. You know, people say nobody's listening to me. Nobody's hearing me. It doesn't even help for me to tell people how I feel, what I think, and what I'm going through because they're going through the same stuff. They don't even listen. They just wait for me to be finished and done so they can tell me their story. It's almost like God says, I'm here. I'm listening to you. I'm hearing you. And I'm watching you, and I'll never leave nor forsake you. And then he says this in the third statement as he looked at them. He says, don't be afraid. See, Satan still wants to work with situations, circumstances, situa uh, with people, and impose on us a spirit of fear. Because when you are looking at what's happening around you and listening to people's opinions, and you engage in what you then see and say what you hear, I can guarantee you, slowly but surely, uncertainty, doubt, unbelief, anxiety, and fear will grip you and throttle you to death. He says, don't fear. Look at me. You know, I've got five grandchildren. And at times, um, they go through things and struggle with things and sometimes fear grips them or something happens that makes them fearful and i've often heard their mums or their dads say to them look at me uh, while they're looking at what's happening around there look at me to reinforce love and comfort and encouragement and faith in their hearts i'm going to watch over you i'm there for you i'm keeping you i'm holding you and jesus says look at me don't look around he says, Peter, when Peter get up out of that boat and he walks on the water, he says, Peter, are you going to do the impossible? But the condition is you're going to have to look at me because when you look away, it's going to overwhelm you, Peter. So I want to say that to you this morning, church, as we engage in this year, there's good days ahead of us. I, I know right now when we look around us, it doesn't look like it. But I'm here to prophesy and say to you the demonic assignment has been broken over your life. It's a new day. It's a day to look into the eyes of Jesus that even though sometimes the enemy is telling us you're going nowhere, you're stuck, God is in the middle, in the midst of us. God doesn't change His plans. He rather changes us to handle the situation, to fulfill the plan. So when we struggle, what do we do? We engage. We, we engage in a meaningful way. We don't just engage we know that there's an other side to the situation that I'm in. We engage with faith knowing that we serve the God of the impossible. We realize that whatever perspective I have, how good or how bad it is, God's got a better one. 
Even when he sees us straining, he's not distant or away. Jesus is there, the God of the impossible, and he wants you to know there are times that he gives us an opportunity to push in and to push through. But when we struggle and they couldn't anymore, the Bible says he got into the boat with them and immediately the storm ceased. Get him in the boat. Make sure that he's in the midst. And if ever you want anybody to interfere in your conversation and interrupt you in the middle of a sentence, it's Jesus this year. It's the Holy Spirit. When something comes out of your mouth that speaks negativity and doubt and derogative speech and things that are filled with, with skepticism, you want, listen to me, my friend, you want a good Christian brother or sister. You want the Holy Spirit to interrupt you right in the middle of your sentence and say, that's not how we speak. That's not what we're going to say. When you declare only the negative in what you say, that if that's all you're going to see, that vision is going to cause you to perish. So let's change our vision and see what God wants us to see for our town, for our community, for our, for our country, and for this world, in spite of what the enemy wants us to see. It's in Psalm 46. Let me read it to you in closing. It's in Psalm 46 that the psalmist writes, and he says, listen to this be these beautiful words, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. <laughs> I want to encourage you. I, I know if you felt anything like I felt, I, I, I had to really pull myself together in Christ. I really had to go and sit down and say, God, help me to, to get rid of some of the things that wants to drag me back into the old year and some of the new year that want to get me despondent right here in the middle of a, a little bit of a no man's land. Won't you come and step up, step into my boat and help me to see what you see? And Father, I pray that I will not give up and roll over when you've empowered me and put your Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And Father, at the same time, I pray that I will not become so independent uh, and, and self-righteous that I try to do my own thing, but I will fully and completely rely upon you at this moment in time. Help us to dream a dream so that we can see the good days that you have for us. Help us to understand that you will get into the boat when we invite you in and that and that, that which rages in our minds, the storm in our minds, the storm in marriages, the storm in business, the storm in this pandemic and people's lives, that, that you're the one that when we bring you in speaks quiet and peace, your shalom into it. And thank you, Father, that we're going to the other side even though we can't control how we get there and even though we don't know exactly what the outcome looks like, we trust you and we rely upon you. Listen to Romans chapter 12 in the Message Bible. I'm reading it to you. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you, taking your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. <laughs> Instead, Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants for you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. My friend, wherever you are today, what, wherever you find yourself today, I want you to know that God is in the midst of you and God will save you 
sing over you, rejoice over you, and bring you into a place of deliverance as you and I choose to engage with life, with God, fully relying and trusting upon Him because God cares about you. There are good days ahead of you in 2021 as, together, as we together trust Him and rely upon Him. In Jesus' name, love you. Father, I thank you this morning that when we still our hearts and we look at you just like you said to the psalmist, like the psalmist said, Father, when you said, seek my face, my heart said, your face, God, I will seek. And thank you that you are the one that will walk us out of our middle into our other side with confidence and boldness, making a difference in this society because our God is a good God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you were blessed by this this morning uh, and you need some prayer, don't you want to go and connect with us on your computer screen so that we can pray with you and spend some time with you? Remember, we love you, but more important, God loves you and he's with you and will never leave nor forsake you. God bless you.